Hi, uh, my name's Simon Fenton, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you something kind of interesting in terms of um, Unreal Engine and um, talk about destruction in Unreal Engine. Um, I'm going to uh, approach this a little bit like a tutorial, a little bit like a webinar, and kind of somewhere in between, and hopefully we'll have time for questions afterwards. So um, I want to start off by uh, just showing some websites. So I've just got some um, websites here that might be of interest. And what we'll do is we'll just um, uh, mail, mail out the kind of list of websites. So don't worry if you um, miss this. Uh, so first of all, um, if you don't know FX Guide, they have some great um, articles and uh, um, about um, VFX, not only in film, but obviously in our context we're talking about games. And this one here is called The Art of Destruction or the art of blowing crap up. Now, um, it's, it's a really excellent um, article that talks about all the different approaches um, in industry. So I think uh, it's definitely worth a read. Um, yeah, the introduction to destruction. Uh, now, I just want to um, briefly just show you where you can get Unreal Engine from um, and, uh, and talk a little bit about what Unreal Engine is and its history before we start. Um, so some of you might know um, Unreal Engine from games like uh, um, Unreal Tournament and Gears of War, for example. Um, but um, it used to be uh, an extremely expensive engine that only developers could license. And then they released a thing called UDK. And over the past year, a year and a half, or two years, it's, um, Unreal Engine 4 has become uh, a subscription model and now is completely free. And so if you just type in onmoreengine.com, this is where you can get it. You can download it from here. You just have to create a login uh, to sign in. And um, it's completely free to use. Um, and there are, as, you, as, it's, as it says here, is a 5% royalty on games and applications when you release it and make a certain amount of money, uh, which is, is fantastic um, if you just go over to here, you can see the latest kind of uh, news on their blog about all the things that are being released, um, which is, uh, you know, almost seems to be some amazing things on a daily basis. So once you've downloaded it, um, let me just go here, you'll get this thing called the Epic Games Launcher. And um, this is a, a kind of great little portal, really, because it gives you uh, a few tabs here that are really important in helping you get to grips with Unreal Engine. The first one is this one here called Learn, with some great tutorials um, uh, for artists and level designers. If you're used to using Unity, there's a great transition guide here. And then um, some amazing example uh, uh, tutorials. And talking about examples, you've got uh, some of the most um, incredible uh, demo scenes that you can download. Um, from this infiltrator demo, which is kind of like showing off a showcase for the advanced rendering capabilities, amongst other things, as well as this uh, Showdown VR demo and the award-winning Boy and His Kite. Above and beyond that are some amazing technical um, little kind of uh, rooms that you can go in that show off all the different technical aspects or quality of the shaders and dynamics and that kind of stuff. Um, there's a community section. Again, um, really, really useful in terms of talking about what's been released and the different forums that you can go to. And then you have the library, which is where you launch Unreal Engine. So um, you're able to get different versions. Every time there's a version la uh, launched, you can keep your old version. I currently have 4.9, which is the latest one. Um, and so what I'm going to do is click on Launch. Um, now, it's just kind of important to go through this. So if you're used to this, apologies. Um, but I just want to kind of uh, go through the process. So if you've not done this before, then, um, then uh, hopefully this will be um, helpful. So um, if I wanted to, I could load an existing project, like some of the ones that you can download for free, like Content Examples or the Sun Temple. In this case, I'm going to click on New Project. and um, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of Unreal Engine for a number of reasons. Uh, graphically, it's amazing. Um, 
but also for me as an artist, an artist who isn't comfortable with coding or scripting, Unreal Engine supplies uh, artists with uh, a thing called Blueprint, which is effectively node-based scripting, which is much easier to get a handle on. And what's wonderful about um, Unreal Engine is that it provides a whole host of just blueprints for, um, um, and starter projects. So if I wanted to play around with the idea of creating a first-person shooting game or a flying game or puzzle game, there's a whole host of um, controls already pre-built that you can edit um, and add to yourself. So in this case, I'm just going to choose the first person. And um, what I'm going to do now is just make sure I mean, I could choose if I wanted to, whether I was doing this for mobile or tablet, and choose a quality level. As it is, I'm going to leave it on desktop and console. And I'm going to make sure it has starter uh, content, so with starter content, and give it a name. And I'll just call this um, Destruction uh, 1. And hopefully I haven't called that Destruction 1 before, and create a project. So it goes through the process of creating a project um, and launches that. Now, at work, I find sometimes when I create a project, I have asked it to have starter content, and sometimes it doesn't load the starter content at home. When I work on it at home, um, it loads it the first time. In this case, um, I might have to close the scene down and open it again or save it. So um, I, I'm just going to close down this message log here. So first things first, if I go to the starter content section, I should have a load more files here. Um, like I said, I think it's something to do with the way we uh, have profiles at work. So I'm just going to go File, Save All. And uh, I'll just close it down. So if you get this uh, problem at home, uh, just do what I've done, which is just to create a new project, save it, and then I'll just double click on it here and uh, relaunch it. And that should have all the starter content in there. Uh, before we start properly, I just thought um, it might be quite nice if I just showed you a little bit of my work, um, just to kind of introduce who I am um, and uh, uh, kind of some of the kind of stuff I've done. So um, I, I started off a long, long time ago. My um, first published game was a game called Total NBA '97. Um, on the PlayStation 1. But this was a uh, game that um, got canned. It was called Cartoon Academy. And I, I, I kind of started off in the games industry doing animation and characters. Um, and actually, my real love was actually in environment and environment design. Um, I then went to work at Sony, and I worked on Total NBA 97. I was a senior artist doing environments, uh, basketball courts. Um, animation, which was effectively a lot of motion capture and some rendering. I then worked as a lead artist on a game called This Is Football. Uh, so as well as lead artist responsibilities, I was a, a character modeler, and I did animation and high-res renders. Worked on prototypes, uh, and so started to uh, do kind of push the kind of love of environments a little bit more, but also still build characters as well. So kind of did environment designs in terms of just drawing and then getting to realize those in 3D. Um, worked on a getaway called uh, Getaway Black Monday. And in there, actually, there's a load of rigid body collisions. Um, I don't have, unfortunately, the video for it, but I did a big jet, uh, jetty with the boat smashing into it, a tiny thumbnail there. So just kind of whizzing through here. Um, Generally speaking, a lot of environment design, concept work, um, and um, other um, creatures. So kind of just trying to, uh, in my career, I've done quite a lot of different types of things. Okie dokie. So here we are. Um, it's loaded it up, and um, I've got all the different folders that I need in my starter content. So like I say, I'm going to go um, through this a bit like it's a tutorial. So. I might, for those of you who've used Unreal Engine before, this will be a bit basic, but for those of you who haven't, hopefully this is uh, um, going to help, and um, and then we'll start to talk about the stuff in destruction, um, or the destruction tools inside of Unreal Engine. So um, on the left here, very briefly, we've got um, different modes where we can basically drag and drop different objects in here. So we've got things where it says basic, you can see that we've got different primitives 
and we've got lights. Um, we've got a light section as well. Um, unfortunately, it's not time to talk about the amazing lighting and rendering in Unreal Engine, um, different types of effects and post-process effects, um, and then also volumes for uh, controlling certain interactions. Uh, and I won't go through these, but there are some landscape tools here, and the ability to do things like vertex painting on models and that kind of stuff. Now, along here, we've got the general kind of things that you possibly might expect um, in terms of uh, if you're using, if you've used a game engine before. Um, but we've got things like how to control settings, if we're doing blueprints, uh, if we're controlling cameras, matinee, if we're doing the very important process of building then if we need to rebuild our lighting, then this is where we do it. And then the all-important big button here, play. And if I click on that, I'm then taken immediately into this game. And it's very much like um, a first-person shooter. So if I press W, I'm going to move forward, S, backwards, A and D to strafe, and then we can fire and shoot the boxes. So that's great because I've now got a template in a system um, that's ready for me to populate and experiment with. If I want to come out of it, I can press escape and now I'm back into uh, the engine, not playing the game. Now we'll talk about the controls um, and how to navigate in here in a second. Over here we've got, um, if you're familiar with Maya, perhaps we've got this outli um, outliner here. If I drag this down, you can see this is a list of all the objects in our environment, as you can see there. Um, and just like most applications, you've got these folders you can open so you can organize your work. And then here, if I just drag this up, we've got a detail section. So if I was to select an object, perhaps click on this cube, then we start to get all the important ob uh, information about this object from its location, scale, so on and so forth through to some of the things we're going to be looking at here, which is how to control the physics. Now, um, down here, we've got the content browser, which is a really cool uh, browser for saving um, your work and importing work. And basically, uh, this is where all the elements that go into here are stored. So um, I might, for example, if I go here to geometry, I can see meshes, and I can see not particularly exciting, but it's a cube and a sphere. And if I go to the start content and go down to props, we can possibly see more exciting objects, um, such as this rock here. Now, if I wanted to look at this uh, rock, I could double click on it, and it would load a new window, which is the model viewer. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this um, package, in my view, or one of them, is that I can simply click this tab here and drag it up to the top. So it's just like a web browser in some ways. It's pretty cool. I'll come back to this a little bit later on, and we'll talk about the navigation here, which is a bit interesting if you're a Maya user, because the weld axis is a little bit different. So if you're a Maya user, um, in Maya, the weld is Y up. If you're a Mac user, you're going to be very comfortable with this. Uh, it's Z up. And so I've been uh, using this for some time, um, UE4 since it came out, and UDK before that, and I still struggle sometimes. I guess Y up is just kind of ingrained. Um, now, if I want to zoom around, it's, if I right click in here, I can, with my mouse, I can look around, and if I'm right clicking and press W, I can start to kind of walk around the environment or fly through the environment. But again, pressing S, A, and D, we can strafe. And it's just like using a video game. It's very, very cool. Um, if I use my middle mouse button and kind of rotate the wheel, I can zoom in and out. And if I wanted to um, just use the uh, right mouse button and the left mouse button together, we can kind of strafe around like that. Now, if I want to use it kind of a bit more like Maya, perhaps, or a 3D package, if I just say click on an object like this and then press F to frame, then we can see that we're kind of framing on this object. And if I hold down Alt on the keyboard and uh, just rotate, 
with my left mouse button, and it becomes far more like uh, Maya, effectively, or any other 3D package. So um, what we're going to do now is look at how we can uh, kind of manipulate some of the objects and drag some objects in, and we're going to have a bit of a play. Um, the goal of this session, really, is just to talk about the uh, procedural destruction system inside of um, Unreal Engine. Um, and we'll have a look at some other things as well. And I'll show you some example files. Um, but really, it's just a very broad strokes introduction, a little bit of Unreal and a little bit of its um, destruction uh, capabilities. So uh, let's just say I want to move this big cube over here. I'll click on it and press the W key, and I've got the move um, icon. If I press F to frame, you can see there we're able to move it. Ooh, I'll undo that. Now to undo is uh, Control Z. So if I kind of move that, Control Z will undo. And you can see here that I can just click and drag, move up and down. Now a really nice feature in Unreal is if I move off the ground and I want to move it back, if I just press the end key on my keyboard, it'll pop it back down onto the surface. Now we've got, um, when we're moving, the ability to change out um, from uh, local to world. And you can see if I click on here, we go from world to local, because you can see that my cube is rotated. If I was to look at this cube here and switch around, it makes no difference. But if I wanted to rotate this one, E is rotate. And now you can see I can click on these axes and rotate it around. I'm just going to frame it by pressing F. Now, um, if I press W to move, you can see the swap from uh, local to world coordinates. Uh, if I want to scale, I can press R. I notice that we've got the icons up here as well. So you can see, you could click on those if you wanted to. And we can scale these objects non-uniformly if we chose. So um, one really, really cool feature, and I think uh, Max users enjoy this as well, that is if I wanted to duplicate this object, um, then what I can do is press W to move, holding down Alt and clicking and dragging. Uh-oh, there we go, I thought I'd duplicate the floor. I can just simply duplicate this object, which is really nice. Uh, it's a great feature. And now you can see that we've got uh, the objects populating our scene. And if I wanted to delete it, I could just simply select it and press delete to get rid of it. So um, we've got this kind of first person template environment. And you can see if here, if I just click on this, that's our first person character. And it's all set up for us. And if I now press play, as you can see here, we can walk around and shoot stuff, which is great. And um, what we're going to do now is just have a look at, start to get a feeling for the, uh, the way physics is handled inside of Unreal. Like I say, this is a really short amount of time, so it's really just a very broad overview. Um, so what I want to do is select an object. If I press Escape to come out, and now I'll go and select, say, that cube over there. I'll press F to frame. Now we can see, if I go into my uh, details panel, we can see the scale there. Now what I'm going to do is scale this down a little bit. And if I press W to move it down and press N, you can see it goes back down on the floor. Now if, what I want to do now is uh, move and shoot this. And you should notice that, wow, look at that. <laughs> it's not stopping. It's flying over there. Um, I'll try not to spend my time shooting cubes and laughing. Um, but that is quite funny. And basically, the physics engine has kind of uh, taken into account that I've scaled this object up. And because I've scaled it, sorry, scaled the object down. And because I've scaled it down, it has less mass. Um, whereas if I was to perhaps scale this object up, maybe make it a little bit bigger, other way. And again, we'll move it up. If I press play and shoot it, nothing happens. I have to double check one thing very briefly, that uh, this object has, in my details panel, if I scroll down, simulate physics turned on, and it does. And it's just very big, and there's not enough momentum 
uh, or velocity in the bullet. So if I now scale this down, we can start to move it. So that's really, really cool. We can um, have lots of interesting uh, forms and shapes. Um, so if we were making a game based on shooting objects um, and how they behave in a physics way, then just by simply changing the size of it, we're changing the eff effectively the mass of it. But also, if I wanted to perhaps play around with just um, something as simple as friction, or the idea of this object, this little cube here, having um, uh, some physical properties and the floor having physical properties, we can do that. We can kind of create um, the notion of maybe ice or a really shiny, smooth surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Press escape to come out, and I'll select that object. Um, now, I'm just going to grab this and move it up here so we can see a little bit more of this um, uh, uh, details panel. And if I scroll down, you can see that we've got the physics uh, section here, and we've got simulate physics turned on. Um, and if I was to just come down to um, physics material just here in collision, you can see it doesn't have one. Now, a physics material, you can have a whole library of them. Um, so you could use, you know, create uh, different properties. And we're just going to create one now. So if I click on here, you can see that we've got um, browse. And I've got nothing in this section here. I do, however, have this physical material, create new asset. So if I click on that, it's going to ask, where do I want to put it? And the content browser down here, um, is a, a very easy to use browser, and I need to decide where I want to put the stuff I create. So I'll just cancel that, and um, I'm going to attempt to be organized today. So if I just go into content and right click here, and this is going to be recorded, so if I'm going too fast, don't worry, you'll be able to watch this through again. Click on new folder, and I'll call it SF underscore content. Something really exciting like that. OK, so I've now got a folder that I can save stuff in. So if I go back to my box, go down to Collision, click on Physical Material, I can now save it in there. And I'll just call this Ice. It's not ice in you know, any kind of real sense of the word. It's not, you know, I don't know what the physical properties are in terms of friction. Um, you could have called this Super Smooth. But um, notice here that we've got this kind of little star, and that means that it's not saved. So if I was to right-click on here, then I could go Save, and that star's gone. So if I have a bit of a calamity and it crashes, then that's, you know, I'm not going to lose my work. If I double-click on this, um, what it does is open it up, um, and you can see here, if I was to drag that little tab down, it's great because, you know, um, it's, like I said, it's working like a um, web browser. Uh, and so I can kind of uh, make it as big or as small as I need to. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to set my friction to zero. And that's that. So if I now shoot this object, well, we know it's quite small, so it's going to go absolutely everywhere. That's probably no good. So what I might do is scale it up. And I'll move it up a bit. Press N to go on the floor. And now when I shoot it, it should move a little bit more than the other boxes. And indeed it has, if I just, well, it's quite big. So um, this has that physical property on where it has no friction. But the floor itself has friction as well. So if I press Escape and now select my floor, you can see here that I've, in my world outliner, it's selected floor. I could go down into physical materials in collision. And if I just click on that, we can see that we've got ice physical material. And now I've effectively applied. Let's just right click on and save it. Already done that. Press play. And now you can see that this object is sliding around, which is. I promise I wouldn't laugh when shooting boxes, um, but I can't keep that promise. And this ridiculous thing is now floating around. 
So we can assign uh, physical properties or you know, kind of like a perception of, of, of property. And so I've basically specified that this floor is super duper smooth and so is this box. Um, however, if I shoot other things, um, let's go over here, is it going to have the same effect? It is moving quite a lot, but nowhere near as much as the other thing. And so this kind of tiny little uh, demonstration is still moving. Hopefully shows that um, the important thing about video games is that we have to basically tell everything in the game to do something, have a property. Is it dynamic um, or is it static? Is it using dynamic lights or is it using baked lights? Um, uh, and the reason we do that is because of optimization. Basically, if everything had um, everything turned up, then the game wouldn't run in a frame. Same goes for kind of texture sizes and and uh, polygon uh, counts and all of those things. Everything we do um, basically um, has to be optimized. So even the simplest setting, this this cube isn't being calculated in terms of its translations, and this is still moving. Okay, I'll press escape to come out of that. So we've seen here, we've got these simple boxes and they, they, they kind of, we've had a little bit of fun with them. But what I want to do by the end of this is be able to kind of just demonstrate how we can use the um, fracture capabilities to um, basically break apart an object. Um, now what I want to do before I do that is uh, bring in some, um, an object from the starter content. So I'm just going to go down here. And we can see that we've got props. And if I click on there, there's this rather gorgeous rock. I think I opened it earlier on. So uh, I'm going to drag it in here. Now, the important thing about this object, uh, if I just press F to frame, um, is that it's game world. And I can uh, use it for set dressing, or I can use it as a, a playable element. Um, if I hold down Alt and copy it, um, really, these things are referencing this here, and that's a really important consideration because um, if I needed to make a change where this rock wasn't quite right, then by simply changing this object here, it will propagate throughout the entire scene. So I'm just going to delete these. And I'm going to run through this rock. I'm going to run through it because I think that's a fun thing to do. Um, and you can see I have run through it. If I run through here, I get stopped. And that's because... Oh, where are we? This object here doesn't have collision built into it. Now, we haven't got time, unfortunately, to talk about things like collision and how we make it, and to talk about level of detail. Um, perhaps that's one for another uh, webinar. But if I just, I don't know if you remember, but I double clicked on this and it opened up the model browser. Now, the model browser is really cool. It gives us all the information about this model. Um, and it's pretty much the same controls, so if I hold down Alt and left click, I can orbit around. It's a really cool model, looks great. And if I hold down L and drag, you can see we've got the light there, which is a great way of just kind of understanding the form a little bit. Now, um, up here we've just got a whole bunch of controls for displaying this model and understanding it. You see, you see the wireframe, and you can see it's still quite a lot of polygons there. Um, uh, 1,000, as we can see there, 1,228 triangles. Um, if I turn that off, um, we can see it shaded. If we have any vertex colors, you display that there, so on and so forth. What we're interested in is uh, the collision. And if I click on this, there is no collision. So that's why in the game, when I run through it, we're not colliding with it. It doesn't kind of interact. It's purely just there as a kind of set element, effectively. Um, if I'd shot a box, the box wouldn't collide with it either. Now, generally speaking, we'd probably um, make the collision ourselves and import it with the object. Um, what we're going to do is use the collision tools in here, the automatic ones, which are a little bit expensive, or can be, and we're going to just create a some uh, simple uh, collision. So if I go here and go collision, I can add a simplified collision here. Or let's have a look at that. What does that give me? Uh oh, that really is simple. 
But if I save my model and now go in here and press play and shoot it, it does something. But as you can see, it looks like that ball is kind of colliding from quite far away. If I select my object, and let's just say I want something to happen to it, I can go to my details and select simulate physics. So where the good stuff starts to happen, and maybe I'll lift it up. When I press play, you can see it's kind of moving around, but it doesn't look like it's behaving as it should. And it's purely because the collision doesn't make much sense. It doesn't kind of look like the object. So if I go back here um, and just select that collision, you can see there it is. That's just, I mean, it's, it's just a basic um, auto collision, um, just trying to find a kind of uh, simple solution, I guess. Um, what we're going to do, that wasn't the best explanation, I mean, it is just a simple, simple mesh. If we wanted something a bit more complex, we could click on here, um, auto, sorry, I'll just go there again, auto convex collision, and this will create a much more complicated mesh. Um, and in real life, uh, we might not necessarily use this. Um, it's actually not that bad. Um, it's actually pretty good. Uh, we want our collisions to be as um, simple as possible, to encapsulate the shape, but um, not be too complicated. But now it's done that, if I save and press play, we can see that starts to behave a little bit more like we expected. It's pretty cool. And again, if I shoot at it, well, we wouldn't expect that to behave like that. We'd expect it to have more mass, to be heavier. Um, and also, um, yeah, we could kind of start to affect um, those, um, the effect of, uh, of the mass on here and, if, and the physics on here. So for example, um, if I just scroll up here and just go to, bear with me a second. Simulate physics. No. Um, I can't find the override. Oh, is that the override? That should be overriding it. Um, and I should be able to change that value. Um, I'm going to change it to a super duper high one. And now when I press play, uh oh. There, we can see that this bullet is now not affecting this in any shape or form. And if I run into it, it's now a super heavy object. Um, if I click on this little arrow here, I'll reset it. And now when I press play, <laughs> you can see um, it bounces around. So we've got con control over the physical properties of, you know, simulated physical properties in terms of how rough the surface is, how much friction it has, amongst other things, as well as the mass. And that can be um, uh, calculated just purely by a scale of an object, or in this case, by us overriding those. So we've basically played with some simple properties. Um, now what we want to do is perhaps uh, shoot this and destroy it. Uh, now, I just want to, before I do this, um, I just want to kind of, actually, no, we'll do it, and then we'll talk about some um, aspects surrounding that. So um, the way we're going to um, basically break up this model. Now, you, if you're doing this at home and following me, you, can, you don't have to do it on this rock, and you can just do it on a cube. I'm going to do it on a cube just purely because um, I think it just shows off how it fractures a little bit better in this case. Um, now, if I go over to, um, I'm just going to close down starter content. And I'm going to go to Geometry, Meshes. And in here, we've got uh, this cube, one meter cube uh, chamfer. Now, if I right click on here, we get a menu. And that menu basically um, gives us a whole bunch of options, um, different ways of dealing with this asset. If it was a model I could, for example, um, that I'd imported from Max or Maya, and I needed to change it, then I could just re-import it. I could import levels of detail. In this case, we want to go create destructible mesh. So if I click on there, what it does, uh, just ignore this um, compiling shaders. It's just rebuilding the shaders. Um, I get a new model. 
Now this is a kind of important distinction because we've got uh, the initial cube there and this new model. So anything we do to this isn't going to be overriding this object. So because um, it's created it, you can see up here I've got um, this tab. I'm actually just going to close it down and, and um, double click on it again so you can see it loading up there. So this is our destruction window um, where we can um, basically fracture our mesh. Um, it's using PhysX, uh, or rather, if I just get, um, bear with me a second, if I just go up to here. Um, PhysX, or um, Apex Destruction by NVIDIA. Um, if we just, I just go to this website. Um, this is implemented inside of Unreal Engine. So PhysX is uh, real-time um, particles, clothing, um, etc., and destruction. Um, and this is implemented not um, in inside of Unreal Engine. Um, and so, for example, if I just click on here, I don't know how well this is going to play back on the um, recording. It might be a bit slow, but you can see all these bits and pieces coming off, huge chunks coming off. So this has been implemented inside of Unreal Engine 3, Unreal Engine 4, um, and these are the platforms it's utilized in, in terms of games, PC, Xbox, um, uh, PlayStation, I, I hope that's PlayStation, <laughs> and Android. Um, and uh, what, we, what we're doing is inside of Unreal Engine, I just make sure, there we are, is we're utilizing uh, not all of its functionality, by, but quite a lot of its functionality. Um, so there's my cube, and we've got this button here called Fracture. Now what this is going to do is create um, a fracture based on a Voronoi um, pattern. I'm just going to go back into here. And when I mentioned at the beginning this article, Art of Destruction, if you want to know what Voronoi is, then you can just scroll down to here and you can see um, breaking up um, RBS objects. Um, you can see here there's a whole section on Voronoi, what it is and what it looks like. Um, and like I said, it's a great article, so do have a look at that. Now, um, what this is good for is um, basically creating very, very quick destruction. Um, I'm going to show you a model a little bit later on where um, hopefully you might get some kind of idea about if you were to do this manually, um, it can take some time. Um, so what I'm going to do is click on Fracture Mesh. Now it's going to do it based on these settings here. Voronoi site, uh, cell site count is currently set to 25. So I click on there, you can see that it's basically gone through and fractured this mesh based upon these settings here. So I've said 25. And what's really cool about this is I can change that number and just click again, and it's done it. Now, if you're doing this at home, and you know, uh, you can go a bit crazy with the numbers. Uh, remember that all of this is procedural and being kind of calculated in real time when we blow it up. I've got a random seed here too, so that should give us a slightly different effect. So it's pretty cool, although, you know, if you're a VFX artist, you might look at this and go, well, it's a bit regular, and you can see the Voronoi, um, and you'd be right. But kind of uh, for what we're doing today, um, for certain objects, it's pretty cool. Um, now, you can see here that I can just kind of take a slider and explode them out. And what that's basically doing is just moving them all the way from the center so we get an idea. Now, the cool thing about this, the really cool thing about this, is it gives us interior objects or interior faces. So it hasn't just sliced an empty shell, it's created the interior for those slice points and actually given us some mapping coordinates. I don't want it to be perhaps so um, so many, so I'm going to turn that down to say 30 odd, 30 odd, and there we go. And now I'll just click on save. So that's pretty cool. I've now fractured that mesh. And if I go back into uh, my world, what I need to do is drag this, so one meter cube chamfer DM for destructible mesh, and I'll drag it into the world, lift it up, 
and um, what I'm going to do is press play. If I press play, I'm not going to see anything that happens to it because my camera is facing in that direction. So what I'm going to do is just click my camera, and I'm going to rotate it. Press E to rotate. And I'll rotate it. Oh, wrong way. Let's zoom out. I'll rotate it so it's facing the cube. There we go. And we'll press play. And nothing's happening. And if I shoot that object, nothing happens. And I don't know if you remember, but I said with video games, everything has to be turned on if we want it to happen. And that's an optimization issue. So if I press escape and select this model now, we can see that I haven't got simulate physics turned on. So this is the destructible mesh. I'll turn on simulate physics. And it won't work as well um, for, for another reason, but if I press play, you can now see that's dropped. And if I run into it, holding down Shift and W to go faster, you can see I'm pushing it, but nothing's happening. And again, that's because I haven't told it to be destroyed. So if I press Escape, oh, where have you gone? You're over there. After frame. Uh, what I'm going to do is go back to my destruction mesh and go to my settings. So I need to say enable impact damage. So I'm going to turn that on. So I'll save that and let's just see what happens when I press play. There you go. You can see now it's broken apart. And if I run into it, you can see I'm able to kind of walk through it. And uh, uh, it's pretty cool. But if I shoot it, not a lot is happening. And so uh, we're going to have to set that up as well. And perhaps I don't want it to fall apart so much. Uh, maybe um, I want it to kind of not be so easily destroyed. So to do that, again, I'm going to have to kind of uh, uh, tell it how much damage I want it to be able to accept. Um, and up here we've got some settings, the amount of damage um, uh, effectively, how much um, uh, damage it can take before it starts to chunk apart. Um, I'm just going to put it to a quite a high number, um, 120 might be too high. Um, and I'm going to say the damage spread, the amount of damage that spreads through the object, and I'm going to set that to a slightly lower number as well. It's quite a small number there entirely. Uh, and I'm going to do the same here on impact damage. Um, <coughs> so uh, I'm going to set that to 0 0.01. And I'm going to set this to a value of 1 here, which is the default impact damage depth. Um, which is, uh, if I set uh, depth 0, nothing happens. But if I go here... Uh, that's where that kind of is. And the reason why we have this is in the, I'm just going to go over back to our PhysX um, settings, or rather just to this website, should I say. Um, some things aren't fully implemented. So there are, um, there are in here, if I just um, go back a page, um, in Apex Destruction, you can download this. All you need is a kind of developer account. You don't have to be a developer. You can just sign up to get this. Um, this kind of has is a really fully implemented, amazing package that allows you to really control how you break apart objects. Um, and you can fracture it in lots of different ways. And you can have levels of fracturing. So you can have uh, um, different depths, or, um, so you, you can break it apart, then it will break apart again, and you have control over debris. Um, as it is, because we're only doing it inside of Unreal Engine, we only have one level of destruction. And uh, if I just save that, and now press play, you can see it hasn't broken apart, and maybe I need to kind of lower my values a little bit. Oh, let's try that again. So. There you go. Oh, that was nice. I'll do that again. Um, sign up to watch me shoot boxes. So um, now what's interesting here 
is that when I shoot this object, my the bouncy tennis ball doesn't actually break it apart. It's the impact against the wall. There we go. How cool is that? OK. So if I go back, I'll press Escape, oh, hello. and we have a look at this object. We can see it's really rather bland. It hasn't got much going uh, on in terms of surface uh, quality material. So I'm just going to um, put a material on uh, the exterior, and then we, when we break it, we'll see what happens to the interior. So uh, again, going to start a content here, and you can see there's a whole bunch of materials. If I go there, um, there's some amazing materials that you can use. They're really, really cool. Um, so uh, I'm going to just take a very simple one, this metal, brushed metal here, and drag it and release it on there. And it will take a little bit of time. It's compiling those shaders. I've probably chosen quite an expensive one. There we go. That's nice. And while we're here, maybe let's just do, there's a nice marble one. I can't find it because I've gone a bit blank. And rabbit in the headlights, so I'll just get that one. Pop it on there. Okay, so we got this nice material on here, um, and I'll go back to my settings and just maybe make them not so uh, not so high. And when we press play, you can see it breaks apart, and you can see here, uh oh, the interior of this object has no uh, material. It has a mapping. Um, now, if you've done some 3D before, you know when you model polygons, they're effectively a shell. It has no interior. So the cutting up and remapping of this stuff takes a long time. It really is an arduous task. And this has kind of all been done for us. So um, what I do is basically apply that material to the interior. Now, I've got a couple of options. I could do it here um, locally. So what that means is that if I was to drag another one of my damage boxes in here, I could have one with one material and, and uh, one with another material, and they could both have different interior materials. If I go back to my cube and break apart this mesh, what I can do is basically go to um, scroll down here. Sometimes it's not obvious. And you can see I've got fracture effects. And so if I scroll here, you can see that we've got um, the opportunity of putting a particle system in there. And if I go to here, materials, you can see that we've got slots of materials. And so this is our exterior, and this is the interior. So if I click on there, we've got a whole bunch of materials going on. So I'll just try and find something a bit uh, simple. So I'll just go for metal brushed or metal burnished. There we go. Did I do that? Yes. And in this one, I'm just going to select a completely different one, brick, clay, old. And you can see it's basically compiling those shaders and loading them. And you can see now I've got the unfortunate, I'm pressing L to move my light here, the rather unfortunate, graphically unfortunate, should I say, uh, metal exterior with brick interior. Which is a bit weird. There you go. So um, I'll save that. And now, when I go back to the game and press play, this one here now has that interior in this inside. So that's pretty cool. So. There's lots of different things we can do with this in terms of um, creating really convincing effects. Um, I kind of I'm quite conscious of time, so I'm just want to kind of um, talk a little bit about. We haven't got time to uh, do blueprint today, which is to go through how we do a blueprint um, and create one. I'll show it to you um, um, in terms of kind of just changing one one thing. But what I want to do is show you some example files of. Um, how one might approach non-procedural destruction as well. And just so hopefully that'll prove to be really, really interesting. So in that case, what we want to do is basically shoot this object. And when I shoot this object, um, I want it to explode. So um, I'm just going to go here to 
my mouse is behaving quite strangely. I'm just going to go to um, content. And you can see a folder called First Person BP, which stands for Blueprint. And in here, we've got a Blueprints folder. And we've got uh, Blueprints that control the first person character. So for example, if I double click on that, and it will load up, you can see what might appear to be quite intimidating. Um, but actually, um, if you're someone like me, as I mentioned at the beginning, someone who finds coding way too abstract and really difficult. If you're used to using shader, node-based shader, um, like the Hypershade, for example, or if you use Nuke, if you're a compositor, um, uh, or if you've used, obviously, the Unreal Engine Material Editor, um, this actually is a really nice way of working. And so you've got control here for mouse input and movement input and controls for jumping. Now, um, if I just go back to um, the map, We've got here first person projectile. So when I play my game and shoot, you can see that's not affecting it. It's affecting that. And we basically have to just tell this little ball, which again is a model, how to behave. We have to turn on the collision. So what I'm going to do is click on this first person projectile blueprint. Double click on it. And we're not going to touch this. Um, we're not going to be playing around with this. We're basically just going to say um, this is the, the blueprint, as it says here, adds physics impulse to any physics objects we hit. If I click on here, we've got the collision component and the sphere. And so there's our object there, as you can see. That's our, um, our uh, uh, ball that gets fired out. Um, so what I want to do is basically make sure that this collision component is simulating physics, and that um, it's also in, so that's a physics section there, is simulating physics. And then also that this is, um, bear with me a second, just here where it says collision preset is a physics actor. I also need to go into sphere and basically just go down to where it says collision collision presets and turn that on to be a physics actor as well. And now if I compile, we're basically we've changed we've changed the kind of settings on this. So now when I press play and I shoot, nothing happens. That is woefully embarrassing. Let me just double check that. Why are you not? So it might be one setting I haven't changed. So um, I won't, let me just save. I'm just going to double check I've done the right thing. So collision component, simulate physics, physics actor, and that should work. And we go to my sphere, and it's a physics actor as well. Press save and compile. And I'm just going to make sure that I haven't set some crazy value on my cube here. So I'm just going to uh, go into, this is my cube here, as you can see with the strange material on. And I'm just going to go up to here and just make sure that these damage settings are, I'm going to click on this, accumulate damage. Uh, but all of that should be okay. I'm just going to put that on quite high value and save. And this will be dreadfully embarrassing if it doesn't work. Uh, and I'm going to have to find out why that hasn't worked. That's really annoying. Okay, well, apologies for that. That should work. Um, I've practiced it again and again, but there you go. Um, okay. So what I want to do now is just um, show you uh, another scene. First of all, how we can basically um, not just use the fracture tool to create uh, a procedural fracture, but we can use it as a means of swapping one model for another. So um, what I'm going to do is just uh, load a model. So if I just go into Maya, you can see I've got this model here. 
So this is uh, a model of a simple kind of form, uh, a um, parking meter, and um, there's a good one and a bad one. So if we smash into this, um, one we would expect to see some kind of damage. So often when you're an effects artist working in games, um, you kind of straddle uh, two areas where you can be a modeler, but also you have to be quite technical, and so you have to create uh, damage states. Um, now sometimes if you're a VFX artist, it's given to you, other times you do it yourself. So what I'm going to do is basically import these two models um, into uh, the uh, engine, and so I'm going to just go in here, SF content, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go import. And what I want to do is basically just go into um, the correct folder. Unfortunately, drag and drop is a little bit um, uh, uh, not used inside of Unreal Engine. So uh, let me just go into here. And there we go. So what I'm looking for is this thing here, parking meter damaged, uh, FBX and parking meter FBX. I'm just going to open them up, and I get this dialog. I'm just going to leave everything on defaults and import all. And so as you can see, I've now got parking meter with a very, very simple collision, as you can see. So yeah, we might want that to be a little bit more refined, and I might have to manu manually do that. Um, but that's fine. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on parking meter, the not damaged one. I want to create a destructible version of that. I'm going to right click and go create destructible mesh. And now I want to double click on that destructible mesh, there it is. Now instead of fracturing it, what I'm going to do is click on this, import FBX chunks. Um, and I'm going to select the damaged version and you can see there that we've got preview depth. And if I go to zero, um, we're in its good state. And if we go here to preview depth one, we can see the damage state. So um, I just have to enable damage and enable, uh, um, if I just go here, um, weld support and accumulate damage and press save. And now if I go in my map, you can see we've got a damaged object here, and I can drag it in. It's a little bit on the small side, so I'll scale it up, say to there. And now when I press play, nothing happens, but I run into it. You can see, dunk, it's now changed. Um, for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, um, when I shoot that, that should have worked. Now, it's because I'm doing a webinar. And if I was in a class, I might spend a little bit more time trying to fix that. I, I, there's nothing worse than someone sitting and watching someone else trying to figure a really simple problem. So I apologize. But what we can do with this is just say, OK, that's all right. So I've got these two damaged states. But maybe I want something to happen to it. Well, what we could do is basically add a little bit of something extra, maybe some kind of um, uh, physics um, or basically some kind of simulation. So what I can do is go and override locally on just this one. I can go to destructible component in my details and open that up. And you can see that I've got particle system. And if I click on here, I can load any particle systems that I've got. And I'm going to set explosion. Uh, if there's a sound and I want to use that, I can select the sound. And so now when I press play, I run into it. Ah, let's put this to the day for. Um, why are you not working? Let's try that again. That, well, if you try that at home, um, that should work out beautifully. Let me just uh, try that one more time. What I'll do is I'll do it properly. I'll just delete that. And I'm going to do it on in the actual damage mesh. So there we go. So I'm going to go down to uh, the settings in here. And we've got fracture effects. And I'm just going to open these up. 
So we've got particle system. Maybe I've done it in the wrong one to play on the safe side. I'll just add the explosion there. And I'll just add the explosion there as well. Double explosion, why not? And I'll save. Now that's embedded into this. So every time I drag this model in here, um, and if I hold down Alt, I can drag a couple in. Now when I press play, I run into that. There we go. We can see, well, that fire is still hanging around. So there we go. So <laughs> hopefully that's kind of been a little bit interesting, kind of showing you that kind of approach that yeah, you can uh, load a model uh, and fracture it using a procedural system, a Voronoi system, or you can have a model with a couple of states um, and you can use that tool to kind of swap between those states and when you hit it for it to um, basically change um, from one to another. Um, now, if I just go to Maya very briefly just to wrap up, um, I want to show you uh, the other side of the coin, if you like, which is that um, often you might uh, not be using, let's just say you're not using Unreal, or you're not using that fracture system, and you might be using another one, then you would do it uh, manually inside a package, Max or Maya, um, or you'd use a script. So in this case, what we've got here is a column, um, and you'll notice that it's um, this is inside of Maya that we've got these fractured chunks. Now this might have been done by, uh, as you can see here, it looks like Voronoi um, using a Voronoi script. There are other packages out there that um, allow you to uh, do it. Um, if you go to this website here, techartist.org. There's a whole bunch of um, websites that you can um, access. Um, I'm just trying to find this one here. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of websites that talk about um, VFX in games or effects in games and gives you a whole bunch of stuff to look at. Now, um, this uh, package here, Rayfire, Rayfire, which is a Max plugin, kind of is one of those plugins that allow you to break apart an object in various ways. So if I just press play, you can see here that this object gets smashed into. Um, now, the important thing about this is that manually, it takes quite a lot of time to do. But um, if I go back, you might notice that um, if I look here, the scale of this is set to 0 0.85. And that's because when we're doing rigid body simulations, if everything's kind of fitting snugly together, then it can cause problems. So a trick that you can do is to basically shrink things down a little bit, explode it, apply the rigid body simulation. When you're ready, you can go back to how it was. Now, I've got another version of this in the Unreal Engine. And you can see here, if I press play, you can see these different simulations running. So these are all done by hand. Well, I say by hand. <laughs> they're cut up via using a script, and then they're animated inside of Maya using Bullet, and um, um, or Maya's rigid body um, simulation. And if I just go into here, let's just go into this one. If I double click, you can see that this is uh, just playing this animation back, which is pretty cool. It looks really good. And, and the difference between this and the procedural system is that this will never change. It's always kind of, um, it's always going to play exactly the same. But the important thing about this is um, calculation wise, you know, these baked in collisions or baked in destructions are much cheaper. So um, I think um, hopefully that's been interesting. Um, and given a kind of small insight into um, the capabilities of destruction inside of um, Unreal Engine, um, I haven't played the animation there. So um, I don't think we've got any questions. Um, if anyone does want to ask a question, um, now might be quite a nice time to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to probably waffle quite a lot. Um, I'll just show you a couple more websites whilst we wait for some questions. Um, 
So I mentioned this one here, um, techartist.org. This is a, a really, really good website. Um, so even if you're not interested in FX, being a tech artist um, is, um, if you're someone who's an artist who likes to code, this is a great place to look through. And these things here, um, Visual Effects Roundtable, these are basically at Games um, Development Conference, a whole bunch of VFX artists get together, and I went to the 2015 one. I think there's about 50 people in a room where they all talk about um, VFX um, in the industry. And you know, this is kind of the notes from those meetings um, talking about you know, the latest and greatest things. Um, so, um, just going through here, um, I think probably what we'll do is leave it there, because I don't think there's um, any questions. Um, so, what I'm going to do is um, stop now, unless I can see a question. Okay, guys, well, um, thank you very much. Um, hopefully, that's been enjoyable, and um, and uh, this should be recorded. So um, there's lots and lots of tutorials on the EPIC website. So if you go here, you can see, if you go to learn, video tutorials um, are very, very good, and you can basically get to grips with this engine really, really quickly because the documentation is first class. Okay, thanks a lot.